Hi guys, welcome to another video. As you recall last week, we talked about showing the new flasher we've developed. Everybody knows, especially those starting out, hunting game fish can be a problem. So guys use flashers. Flasher is a simple device that the fish can see and are attracted to, but we feel sound is just as important, if not more important. Sound will travel much further through the water than visual. So the fish hearing it will turn and come towards the sound. They're curious. We have had a variety of flashes over the years, some wobble, some spin. How much of a sound that does play, we can't really prove it. But fishermen fairly recently have started with lures that have balls in them that rattle. So we've gone down that track. Simple little lure has sound. That we feel is very good to bring fish in from much further away. Once they get closer, they now visually can see it. And then we add a tail. That tail is the visual attraction. The sound is to attract them from a long way away. Don't shake it when they're close. You can actually spook them away. Rattle it when you see nothing. Wait a few moments, have a look. If you see something, dive on it. Another trick, don't dive at the fish. Dive at the lure. These fish will get FOMO, especially if they've come in and turned away. Dive hard at the flasher. Those fish suddenly think, what have they missed? Why are you now attacking the flasher? And they'll often come right up to you, point blank, very easy to take. We have two types of flasher floats a small capsule flasher specifically for shore diving. Then we have the larger one generally used off the boat. The larger one, we've mentioned it in the past. You can have a look at its shape, it's triangular. That triangulation is to stop it rolling around on the deck. The flat surface is to give it as much buoyancy and remain on the surface to have wave action. These little tails operate very well just with wave action. The slightest chop will aggravate that little flasher and get the tail to work. You need to manually shake it to get the balls to rattle. On another point with flashes, many people make big flashes and in a lot of cases, too much of a flasher, in my opinion, actually scares fish away. It's visually just too much. So this is why we tend to have a lot smaller flashes, small little spinners, it gets their curiosity. If you have a look at this flasher, you'll see what I mean. It's much smaller, actually hard to see from a human point of view, but fish, believe me, they can see a lot better than we can underwater. And they'll home in on that. And as I've said, watch the fish's reaction to it, dive on the lure. You will see them often come back as you've seen in this footage. So here's an example. As you can see, the diver dived hard at the flasher, turned underneath the flasher, the fish turned back again. Hard to see from the surface, but it did exactly what we wanted it to do there we take the fish. As you've seen in these videos, the fish we're shooting aren't large. This is not about shooting big fish. This is about showing you how this lure attracts game fish into the area. Yeah, you can see how we set the flasher to the depth. This is in a pool just to get a controlled shot. You set it down, make sure it's at the depth that's appropriate for you and your diving ability and obviously the clarity of the water. And then we lock it away with the bungee. That's all that's required to keep it at that depth. When at the end of your drift and you need to retrieve the flasher, keep the bungee in that position. That'll set the depth for your next drift. Wind it back on, throw it in the boat. When you get to your next drift spot, climb out, release the flasher. You will now see it deploy by itself to the depth you preset. As you can see on the bottom of the flasher, there is a small skirt that bobs. This has been set up specifically for this type of a flasher. It's not like a fishing lure that gets pulled straight across the water. This lure only really works up and down, exactly the same as the rattle flashes. Everything needs to work in the vertical plane, not like a fishing lure where you drag across the surface. Some of you might have noticed the weight at the bottom has a skirt over it. That skirt and weight is set at, an, at a horizontal angle. When it's lifted, it travels upwards and when you drop it, it turns again. So this action is much more appropriate to a bobbing fish opposed to a lure just working straight up and down. There's just about no action if we pull it straight up and down. 
We want that bobbing action and it tends to duck and dive and change directions as well. This is very good to show another component of the flasher that can also attract fish. As you can hear here, with a diver down, yanking on the bottom of the flasher, if you see nothing, you can give it a yank and see if anything comes in from far away. As you can hear, this is quite loud and that sound does travel a long way through the water, way further than what the visual reference of the lure is. So there you have it, perfect solution to hunting game fish. Hope you enjoyed that video, stand by for the next. Hi guys, for those of you watching this on YouTube, you may notice in the settings that we are now setting up captions in different languages. I think we have six languages. Go to the settings, choose the language. Hope that helps you viewing our footage.